Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the best way to prepare for a software developer interview. As someone who has been there and done tons and tons of different developer interviews, both being the interviewer and also the interviewee, I can attest to saying the process for the technical for any technical interviews is rigorous and a lot of times really stressful. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for your feedback, questions, comments. You all are just amazing, so thank you. Okay, let's get started. Before we get into exactly what is a software developer interview or a technical interview, we need to talk about the different stages of it and what it entails. It's important to note that every company is different, so what I am telling you for the different stages is just average and typical of most companies. Some companies might have their own different interview process, some might have others, but this is pretty much standard to some degree for all companies. The first stage is usually the technical phone screen, and what this means is the company has reviewed your resume and good news, they like you, they're intrigued by you and want to know more. This stage is very surface level. They'll ask you some personal questions about yourself, your history, maybe some more questions about what's on your resume, different things like that. The next stage is a remote coding take home assignment or challenge. There are two ways that this is typically done. One is through you take home a coding challenge and complete it in the time allotted to you, submit it, and they review your code. The other is they are actually watching, sharing the screen with you while you are coding and solving a challenge. The third is an on-site whiteboarding or technical challenge. And this, yes, we all know, we've all heard the rumors and it's true, is the most scariest stage for many of us as it can be very overwhelming and nerve wracking, but I'm going to talk to you today about how to best prepare for it as well. I also think it's important to touch on who you will be talking to throughout these interviews. And that really depends on what kind of company you are interviewing for. If you are at interviewing for a startup, for example, you will most likely be interacting and having interviews with everyone from the CTO to designers to QA. Uh, because startups are usually such a small, tight-knit family, you not only are going to be interviewed by software developers or software engineers, but also to other people on the team because you'll be working so closely with them all. At a larger company, typically you will go through different kind of people or different people, people in different roles, I should say, from recruiters, HR, to software engineers, and maybe even some manager level people. Okay, now that we have that covered, let's go in depth and really break down each stage of a developer interview and how to best prepare for it. The first stage, as I mentioned, is the technical phone interview. This is the first time you are interacting with this company. And a lot of times it will be a recruiter, someone from HR. Maybe there'll be some technical person on the phone, but definitely not always. It's really important during this stage of the phone interview to have done your research on the company. When you come into the phone interview, don't just kind of think of it as, oh, this will be so easy, I'll ace this. Take this time to really understand the company, company values. Even if you have time, look up who's interviewing you, what's their experience, their past history, so you can kind of find different areas to relate to each other. Alongside that, it goes with know your audience. Know ahead of time who is interviewing you, and if you are talking to someone who is a recruiter or from HR, don't get too technical on them. They're not here because they want to know all about your technical details of the last project you built. They want to know if you are a good fit from a soft skill standpoint. Are you a good team player? Do you have good communication skills? Different things like that, that's what they're looking for. But regardless if it is a recruiter or HR person that is interviewing you on your phone interview or if it is someone more technical, there are typically three things people are looking for. One is communication. Do you have good communication skills? Two is teamwork. What are your teamwork skills like? They can tell if you have good teamwork skills or at least get an idea when you are telling stories through the questions they are asking. How well do you work in teams? And three is your enthusiasm. Do you even want to work for this company? Yes, you are on the phone, but is it just to kind of get a feel for the company or are you actually really enthused about it? The next part of the software developer interview process is the remote coding challenge. And I really want to state here that even though it is a take home coding challenge or take home coding project, do not let your guard down or kind of relax on this. It can seem as though, oh, this is going to be great. I can ask friends for help. It'll be so easy. Do not do that. 
Why I say that is because even if you ask friends for help on this part where it's a take home coding challenge and they help you uh, solve a problem or build a project, the next stage of the interview or at some point, they are going to be asking you about how you built the project, why you built it, why did you choose these methods here and there. And if you really don't have a strong understanding of the project that you built, they will be able to tell that right away. And it'll be really embarrassing and the interview will probably be done right there and then. As I mentioned, there's usually two different ways to do this interview uh, for the coding take home coding challenge. One is they just give you a project and give you X amount of time to build that project. You submit your code and they review it. The other way is they're actually sharing a screen with you and watching you code as you solve the challenge. This way, of course, is much more challenging. And as of course, when we're having the screen being shared and what, knowing someone is watching us code, no matter what, it's going to be more nerve wracking. If this is the case and you are sharing your screen, there are some really important things to keep in mind. The first one is communication. During this time when you are solving this problem or challenge and someone is watching you code, it's important to communicate before you even type a line of code what your thought process is and how you plan on structuring this out. As you continue building out the algorithm or project, make sure to really clearly communicate what you are doing and why you are doing it. Even if it seems pretty obvious to you and you know the interviewer knows why, still communicate that. This is because during this time, they are looking for strong communication skills, teamwork skills. When you are building this project and you want to change something or add something, don't use I hope to do this, say we would do it like this because of this make them feel like they are included and part of the process. It's also important to note if you are interviewing for a startup, sometimes it will either be the take home coding challenge or the whiteboarding. It might not necessarily be both sets uh, of processes that you need to do for the interview, but usually it is a take home challenge. The main things they are looking for during the take home challenge are of course coding skills, also testing skills, are you testing your code, communication skills, problem solving skills, and once again, teamwork. And now we are on step three. You have made it to the in-person, on-site whiteboarding or coding challenge. And this, as I mentioned, is often for many people the most terrifying part because you're literally standing up at a whiteboard with people sitting and watching you and coding or sorry, not coding, but writing out uh, how to solve an algorithm. And that can be very terrifying for a lot of people. Uh, I know for myself anyways, it was one of the scariest things, or it always has been the scariest thing I have done. I really don't like them to be honest. Um, but the more you practice, especially practice algorithms, the more easier and more comfortable you will be through this process. Websites such as LeetCode or HackerRank are two great sites that you can go on to practice algorithms. Some tips when you are going into the room for a whiteboarding process is once you get there, remember to ask clarifying questions before you write anything on the whiteboard. Even if you think you know exactly what they are speaking about, still ask clarifying questions uh, to my knowledge or uh, what's a good one. Um, from my understanding, the end goal is to do this or different things like that. And the reason being is it's not, even if you know exactly how to solve the problem, it shows that once again, you are communicating and being a team player. And this goes right into point number two, which is talk through the process, talk through as you're writing the code. And one of the ways that I practiced for so long to get comfortable doing this, because it's not a normal or natural thing to do, is I would just literally, when I'm practicing my algorithms, speak out loud about what I am doing and most importantly, why I am doing it. If there comes a point when you are solving this algorithm that you get stuck or you really don't know what to do, first of all, that is okay. Second of all, you're not the first person to have this problem. Many people get stuck all the time. What is important is how you react to the situation. If you are having trouble or having kind of a roadblock during the time you are whiteboarding, first of all, acknowledge it. Say, you know what? I have solved tons of different algorithms like this before, but I think my nerves are getting the best of me and I'm feeling a little blocked here. I'm kind of thinking of doing X, Y, and Z, but I'm not really sure because X, Y, and Z. Give them kind of a window into your thoughts and your thought process. No good interviewer or good company, if they are a good interviewer or company, they're not going to be like, you're terrible, you're the worst coder ever. No, they're going to appreciate that you are communicating and wanting to work through things together. It also goes back to if they give you a horrible experience and they say, you should know this, I can't believe you don't know this and just make you feel bad. 
I always say to myself, is that really a company you want to work for anyways? Probably not, because as much as they are interviewing you, you are interviewing them too. Some things that interviewers are looking for during the whiteboarding process, obviously technical skills, communication skills, teamwork skills, problem solving skills, but also to creativity. How creative can you be with coming up with different solutions, your reason why? They're also looking for, are you a good culture fit? How do you engage with the other employees? How do you, you know, react to them or have conversations with them? They also know though that you are very nervous and they don't expect you to be fully yourself in that moment, but basically, are you a good person? Are you a good human? Would they enjoy working with you? Those are the three main steps in a software developer interview or any really technical interview, I would say. And the main thing is just continue to practice, speak out loud your thought process and get comfortable with that. Once you have that done, you are ready to go. And also keep in mind, which really helped me, I'm just going to reiterate it, is you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Don't get caught up on, am I good enough for this company? No, is the company good enough for you? That's how you really should be thinking. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and valuable. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.